So I log on to the server this morning and what do I find other than a big explosion? A big old mess. And who's going to end up cleaning up this, eh? It's me, the gardener. It's what I do. To be fair, I like cleaning things up, so it's good news. But yes, some thought this was a swarm of bees, others thought it was the end of the season, and some thought it was some sort of hobbit society. Hmm. <laughs> Turns out it was the Hermitcraft Big Base Swap. And so those who put their names inside of this machine are having their bases swapped. I did not put my name inside of this machine though, so I have dodged a bullet there. I would not want to have swapped my base. Jeez, I spent so much time on it. Uh, but <laughs> what a disaster this is left behind. I will be cleaning this up at some point in a live stream. For now though, we're going to leave the area. I had entirely different plans for this episode. Behold the glory of our brewing factory. I love having a reason to visit this place, and we need to stock up on a certain type of potion for another hermit. Mr. Tango Tech is working on Among Us. That's the game Among Us in Survival Minecraft. And needs a whole bunch of Turtle Master potions. So I thought it would be a good idea to make sure that we can stock up this in chests entirely. Which will be no problem at all. But there are a lot of chests. And so I did a bit of a count to see how many we would need in total to stock up every single one of these. 514 shulker boxes. Fortunately for the Turtle Master potion we only need 28. And where I've done some organising and tidying away of all the shulker boxes that were sprawled out we definitely have enough for that as you can see we've got quite a few made up over here but this is not enough for 514 so i'll have to do some more trips to the end dimension if ever i want to reach my goal of filling it up fully one thing i believe i have secured though is enough ingredients for all of the different potion types and the one thing that we haven't farmed yet is dragon's breath so yes, the Hermits can currently modify their potions with Dragon's Breath. Down there, there is enough to make quite a lot of them, but we haven't built up that large stockpile like we've done with some of the other modifiers right here. So today, we're going to try and attempt to make a Dragon's Breath farm. Oh yeah, and of course, we're going to fill up all of these with Turtle Master potions. And I love this system. I just chucked all of those Shulker boxes into the bit down below, and look at this, it just starts brewing them again. Fantastic. Okay then, Dragon's Breath Farm. We're going to need a lot of some stuff and not a lot of other stuff. For the farm itself, we only need a few building materials here. But what we're also going to add are some beacons to protect us, the player, when we're in the end dimension. And then I need to bring along some food. And that is overkill, but you know, I've got tons of golden carrots. In fact, I've got another shulker box over here from earlier in the season. So that'll be our food of choice for this farm. Then we have lots and lots of bottles, and obviously we're going to convert all of that into Dragon's Breath. Now the big question really is how are we going to do that? And you know me, we are going to automate. This will be an AFK Dragon's Breath farm. I'll be able to leave the computer alone and have my player on the server just harvest this stuff over and over again. And I did not expect to see this. A slime and an enderman in a boat. What have the Hermits been up to here? What's going on? So anyway, I have my suspicions about building a farm like this because the Ender Dragon can break blocks. Now it can't break the End Stone or the Obsidian, but it can break other things like chests and redstone and all the tools that you would need to help you build an automated farm. So I figured that designing and testing would take a really long time, especially if the Ender Dragon's just gonna like fly by everything you built and destroy it each time. So I turned to YouTube to look for someone else who'd already made a farm, and I did actually find one. We've got bees in the end dimension, and we've also got lava. I have absolutely no idea why these are here, and oh, that Viralis face is endlessly hilarious. Dude, I'm trying to look at the bees, not you. Okay, distractions aside, I found a farm designed by Sayaga SB. And this is a fully functional AFK Dragon's Breath farm. What I will say is that their video is simply just a showcase of it in action. And it took me a while to figure out how to build it. And then actually how to use it as well. But I did that in a creative world. And with a little bit of time I've sussed everything out. So we're going to build it here and I'll show you exactly how it works. 
So, are you ready to use your imagination a little bit? When we're using this farm, I need to clear out the entirety of my inventory. So imagine that there's nothing in here. And what we do is we fill it up with junk blocks with the exception of two slots. In my offhand, we're going to be holding golden carrots. That is our food of choice. And then in my main slot that I'm also selecting, we're going to have bottles. And then everything else will be filled up. Now this will enable me to simply hold down right click and I'll either be able to eat food or scoop up some dragon's breath with this bottle. And when I do that, the dragon's breath will pop out of my inventory because there's no space for it to go to. So I will literally walk over to this contraption, stand on top of the honey block, close the door, face downwards and hold down right click. Then I'll be able to access both my food and my bottles and then what's going to happen is the dragon will fire its dragon's breath at me and it will land above my head but despite me facing downwards like this I'm actually going to be able to pick it up with the bottle that I'm holding in my hand. Now the dragon will do that while it's flying around and it will also do that while it's stationary here on the middle which it periodically does and in testing all of this I realized something must have changed some time ago in this game where the dragon can't go lower than the height of the floor we're on right now because at no point does it ever fly down into the ground and then knock out a bunch of blocks like we have here and this is the contraption so let's explain how it works when that dragon's breath pops out of my inventory it's going to fall down through the honey block into the hopper below that will create a pulse over here that goes round and activates this little dropper elevator from this chest we feed into it bottles so that means we get our bottle back and then over on this side we've got another one you can see it continues around the corner but it also makes a little bit of a clock and I think that's to maybe give you more food if you need it so this is where the food will be dispensed from and down the bottom here is just where the dragon's breath goes into below that hopper so you can see we've got two double chests which is more than enough for our needs so now we're going to fill in the space around here. I just don't really want any Enderman coming into this, but also this is how they did it in the tutorial. So maybe there is uh, another good reason to fill all this space in that's not obvious. And with that now done, the farm is ready to go. However, I want to be precautious with this. I don't want my player to die when AFK here. We want to be able to do this for a long time and get lots of Dragon's Breath. So now we're going to do something that in all honesty definitely terrifies me. And that is facing the void. I decided long ago it would be a good idea to put beacons down at the very bottom of the world where the dragon wouldn't fly. But since then I've learned it probably isn't going to fly anywhere near here anyway. So I could have just put them underneath the surface. Anyway, I actually want to put this all the way down at the bottom of the world because I can't remember the last time that I did this, right? Now I'm wearing all of my netherite armor and stuff. And look at that, I didn't fall into the void. But just in case I did, I can just fly out of it, so... <laughs> oh, it's still scary, even though you know you're going to be okay. And so let's take in the view. You don't normally see this part of the Minecraft world too often, do you? So anyway, now we have strength, which we don't really need, but we've got resistance to, and regeneration to help me stay alive if I take damage when I'm in the farm. And there is also a, a beacon base right here and initially I thought, oh there you go, you know, the dragon doesn't fly down here. But this might have just been in use while people were killing withers and it looks like they've done that with the assistance of some iron golems. This is it my friends, it's happening. And by the way, you're going to be hearing the sounds of this player and not the camera account. So there you go, some dragon's breath gets thrown. I survive and I create some Dragon's Breath potions. Now unfortunately I had some technical issues with recording a moment ago. I was just letting you know that I've headed over here with some diamond gear and I've left my netherite gear back at the base. You can also see I brought with me a whole bunch of end crystals and then I walked you through how I set this all up which I've sort of already explained right. But there was one other important detail. So I've got the bottles here on one hand, the food on the other. And the trick here is to apparently continuously hold down right click, otherwise I take more and more damage from the dragon's breath. But yes, I have to continuously hold down right click. So what I do is I press F3 and T to reload the resource pack. I take my hands off the keyboard and mouse so I can clap them. And now I'm technically still holding down right click. And there it is. I'm not even using my hands and we're, we're picking up the bottles. And that is the wonderful trick. 
And here you can see how it works the other way. When the Ender Dragon is perched on the bedrock, it will shoot the Dragon's Breath over and I will still be able to pick it up. It does look like maybe I need to fill in some of these blocks as well though. But you can hear me picking up the bottles. Anyways, after this I set out to AFK for about an hour. I put on the replay mod which we're watching right now and you can see the dragons flying around and shooting its dragon balls at me and I'm collecting plenty of dragon's breath. But one other thing that I learned is that it will also shoot it out in different directions when it's perched on the bedrock. So it doesn't always target me and this means you know it's a little bit slower than I expected it to be. But one thing I didn't expect to happen was to die. And the way in which this happened is kind of interesting because according to the replay we got these stacking of massive amounts of dragon's breath and then a fireball later and kaput, I died. So yeah, that's my death screen and I want to point something out, I actually died like over 40-50 minutes ago and you can still see my items are floating around here on the screen. Well, now I get to use our beloved respawn room. Or not. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, well, I guess I can go and pick out a set of armor manually. And uh, is that a tip? I think we just made five diamonds. It had also occurred to me that when I would be done farming, I wouldn't really be able to kill the dragon with the items that I had there. So we should bring some means to kill the dragon. And I think, you know, some diamond armor like this is good enough with a good weapon and maybe a bow and some arrows as well. And of course, as I hadn't brought these things along with me, then the other option would have been just to let the dragon kill me anyway, since I wouldn't have had any valuables on me. And I'm not going to use the respawn kit. I'm going to pick out some items from here, and we will use these, take these into the end dimension. And this time, I'm actually going to leave my armor on, which is why I brought a chest plate with me. Perhaps there are ways in which I can actually end up taking... A lot of damage, so the armor would help reduce that. Maybe the resistance wasn't enough. And yeah, another thought crossed my mind. All the items would have dropped down to this level. There's no bottles here. Empty ones. Also, we got a lot of Dragon's Breath for a short amount of time. That's actually really promising. I've just realized I didn't really bring my fighting supplies with me. I've got no bow. I've got the arrows. I mean, I'll literally just have to kill it with the sword, which is, of course, possible. It just ends up... Ugh! being a little bit slower. So this is it, AFK session number two. And this one also ended in death, but this time I think I spotted what happened. The dragon's breath actually came down to the side where the stone brick stairs were. So I think I couldn't actually absorb all of it into dragon's breath bottles and therefore it just continuously did damage to me. So this time I'm heading back and I brought my netherite gear and Bebo because we're actually gonna fight the dragon and kill it, which I don't think I've even done this season. There is one question I had, and that is how easy will it be to just knock these off? Pretty easy, actually. Okay, Okay. well, that took too long, about six or seven minutes. It's a very dull and boring fight. <laughs> so I probably could have made some changes here without having to do any of that. And that's what I wanted to see. Also, not a lot of damage taken at all. That's really promising. So if we found the one thing that kills us, we're probably set up for an overnight session. So we are going to fill all of this in and then I'm going to put a trapdoor in this space. I can still stand on top of the honey block. Ah, but I can't jump out, right? Because the honey block stops me from jumping. As long as this doesn't interfere with the dragon's breath, then that should work, right? I can stand here, hold down, right click. <laughs> still can't get out because of the honey block. So as an alternative, I've got an enchanting table, and this is just lower than a block, so if something's on top of it, then it gets picked up from down below. You can see the system gives me the golden carrot and, uh, and the bottle, and then I can stand on that, jump up, and hop out. Excellent. So I'm prepping for the third and final AFK session this episode, and I think I found a bottleneck. A literal bottleneck. We do not have enough bottles of all things. I'm over here at the witch farm, we're completely out, and I'm thinking, if I can do this overnight, I can make tons of this stuff. However, we're going to be limited by the amount of bottles that we have. So you can probably tell from my XP bar that I have died, and I have not claimed XP from killing the ender dragon, because I did not do that. I, in fact, died over here in the farm again, but that's fine, because I realised once we run out of bottles, we've actually gone through all of them that I stocked up. 
then when the dragon's breath hits me, I've got no way of taking it out, and so it will continuously attack me. And so I have died over here, but the good news is everything got picked up down here, so I got all of my armor back, and I also got all of these potions sorted out. Oh yeah, and the thing with the enchanting table, that didn't work, so I figured I should just keep a diamond pick on me, and then I'll be able to dig my way out when I'm done, but of course, I died. Oh, and then the story of the Ender Dragon. So, Coralis and Joe came over here, and they killed the Ender Dragon in an attempt to save me. They didn't realize I was using an AFK farm and dying was okay. Um, so, that's how the Ender Dragon got slayed. The thing is, though, Joe got killed in the process. I mean, he tried to be a good guy and save this little bumblebee right here, and he lost all of his gear. So, we're going to try and get some of that back for him. And apparently, this was netherite gear as well. It just so happens that I have one ingot and the means to make two more ingots and therefore three pieces of armor. And this is probably the configuration that Joe would have had on. So grabbing my old respawn kit, there's actually some decent armor and we can visit Coralis' shop and put some extra enchantments on here. We'll probably chuck in the elytra as well and maybe a couple of these tools. Not only that, I want to throw in a couple of other goodies like some totems of undying. I'm going to go to Impulse's shop and buy some more. And I'm also going to give him something of value, diamond value, actually. And luckily, we've got a whole bunch over here. So the base race is heating up. We've had Impulse and Cub Fan over here. I noticed that Impulse didn't actually put his time up here. And it also looks like some of the Hermits have been redoing their runs for better times. And as you can see, now quite a few diamonds are accumulating here. But what I want to give to Joe is actually some passes to use this thing right and we're actually going to pay for this as well so four diamonds are for practice runs and three diamond blocks are for timed runs so those are already paid and then joe can use these to have a go at the game and doing a little math that means there's 143 diamonds to grab here for the winner so thanks to all the services the wonderful hermits provide i've spent about 11 diamonds and now we've got this right here that is a pretty awesome respawn kit with some decent gear and obviously some of this needs repairing and there is something I discovered here just the other day it's actually been on the server for a while but someone left the door open here and I found this impulses mending machine free for all hermits and so with this we get a ridiculous amount of XP and we can use it to repair our gear <laughs> and repair Joe's gear and now we've got a nice old renamed shiny shulker box full of fully repaired tools to drop off at Joe's base. And that is going to be a lot longer away than I originally suspected. This is because Joe's base has of course been swapped. So we've got to go all the way over to XB's. So if you remember episode 100 of this season, we did a base tour and the very first place that we went to was XB Crafted, who has been swapped with Joe in the base swap so now this is joe hills's home i thought it would be amusing to leave this inside one of the smaller buildings somewhere and you know joe might have to get familiar with his new base in order to find this so yes i've decided to leave it here but all i'm gonna send him is this screenshot as a clue it might be a little bit trolly, but i think joe will enjoy a good little hunt around his new base anyway Back here at the brewer, we set out to fill up the dragon's breath over here and all of those hoppers and barrels and whatnot have got dragon's breath as well as other items in to filter out the total amount in the system. You can see it comes all the way up to here. So not quite enough to turn on the light, but that is probably going to be good enough for the rest of the season. And as we head out of this area, I am reminded, look at what Corallus has been up to. I mentioned this in the last episode that he was going to build like a touristy attraction area with some buses. But I did not expect this. This is absolutely massive and awesome. And he's built custom trees right around the entrance here as well. This is absolutely spectacular what he's done. He's also taken the whole sandstone wall idea and extended it around here. Oh, this is superb. There's some benches and... Wow, he's done a wonderful job with this. We've got another bus over here bringing visitors to the castle. This is what I love when you start something and then, you know, another hermit comes along and adds to it. Even just in small little parts like this, it's just fantastic. I love what he's done here. 
Now Papa K also asked me to build some statues and so I built the ones that I think we built last season of Hermitcraft, right? This design, it's a favourite of mine and look at that, we've got an end crystal on there looking very magical with the staff and then this one is holding some sort of cloth. And yeah, it's pretty simple and straightforward. One thing I will say, they've been deliberately positioned with this leg in forward because I kind of feel like it looks odd to look at it from that side. So by putting them together, I feel like you get the best angle wherever you stand when you look at these two together. So yeah, absolutely wonderful build. I love the custom trees as well. That was something I was supposed to do in this area, but I never got around to. I'll probably do that on a live stream at some point. But over in this area, you might notice something is a little different. Technically speaking, our neighbor is no longer Corallus, but Zombie Cleo and Zombie Incorporated that have moved in over here. That is a really cool logo, by the way. And I have absolutely no idea what this means for the future of our base plans with our neighbor, as our neighbor has changed. So we have big base plans with Corallus. However, he's no longer our neighbor, so... I don't know what's going to happen with all the building that's going on over here, but he's got a big plan that stretches off into this area, and I've got a plan to kind of fill out the backspace over here between the sandy castle and the jungle, which I'm sure we're going to see soon. And so, my friends, I want to leave you with a little bit of news. If you remember a few episodes back, I was talking about sorting out my office, getting a new desk, getting a new carpet, all that kind of stuff. Well, there's been some delays with doing that. However, it's uh, going to be taking place over the next week now. So if you see some delays from me on content, most likely episodes of Hermitcraft and live streams, then, you know, I'm busy sorting out this desk room that I record in. And I also mentioned it last episode, we have a Hermitcraft stream weekend coming up. So I'm going to put that on the screen so that you can get the info course, livestream.hermitcraft.com is the place to visit. Um, so just reminding you that that's going to be taking place on one of the coming weekends, right? Um, that is it from me though, this episode of Hermitcraft. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like. As always, thank you for the support, and I'll be seeing you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.